there's democratic socialism and there's Marxism and Lenin. Marxism and Lenin is in Stalinism. Democratic socialism is uh, the Labour Party of, of, of Britain, the uh, Labour Party of, of Israel, Social Democratic Party of Germany. That they're democratic socialists philosophically, but they're not synonymous with, uh, with communism because members, well, it goes like this. It, Heron said, well, don't, don't talk about the nails being put in the coffin. One in 1919, the other one in 1972. He says, just, you know, because you want people to join you, so just call it a division. And he's right. Because in 1919, the, the Socialist Party of America expelled the uh, communist members for supporting the Soviet doctrine, which was considered undemocratic. During World War I in Germany, those Social Democrats that supported World War I were forever um, tired and feathered uh, verbally by fellow leftists, you know, and then oh. those, it, it's true. No, it's I'm, that, I'm saying the left has had many, many fights. Exactly. And, and, and who knows what the causes are, but there are a lot of them. World War I was, was, was probably the biggest division in the socialist movement sure. because of the fact that it was a global division where in, in 1972 the division was over Vietnam. So when I say World War I, those social democrats in Germany that supported the war were... were what was the division over Vietnam? Oh, Vietnam? Yeah. The, uh, the social democrats, uh, not include, I think it's not including the Debs Caucus, um, supported the, the war in Vietnam. Really? Yes, it because the social democrats <laughs> that, that actually, and later on, actually like supported Russia, Richard right? Nixon as opposed to George McGovern. Because they didn't like Russia. Oh, well, no, it's say. not that. What happened was that uh, you had DSOC, Democratic Social Organizing Committee, in 1972 was split apart because those that, that hated communism uh, said, well, let's just you know, support the war in Vietnam. But the left-wingers of DSOC, Democratic Social Organizing like Michael Harrington, he said, I don't think so. And then David McReynolds, who started, so, so yet out of the split in 1972, you had um, two groups come about. Socialist Party USA, the party of David McReynolds, who's a pacifist, homosexual, lives in, uh, lives in uh, uh, anti-war, you know David McReynolds, anti-war, staunch anti-war. He's, he's, he's 80 years old, he's a pacifist. Mm -hmm. And he's he's uh, he's he's been uh, imprisoned well not in prison but jailed several times for civil disobedience no felony convictions and he that'll be different he he <laughs> said he said well I'm not going to be a party within a party that supports um, the, uh, the the presidential the presidential candidate uh, George McGovern he said I'm going to start my own organization or political party, the Socialist Party, and we're going to be radical when it comes to being anti-war and pacifist. Uh, my group is a little bit more towards the center out of all the democratic socialist groups, all three of them. DSA being in the middle, DSA being, uh, being also very radical, but um, I like to say that, again, World War I and Vietnam did this in because the Social Democrats got a bad name for supporting it. Some social democrats supported World War I in Germany. The ones that didn't became communists. Some social democrats, you see, in, in DSOC, there used to be a joke. Uh, people used to say, well, I'm a socialist, and I hate the School of the Americas, and I hate the, uh, the human rights violations, atrocities in Latin America, which we've seen in Chile uh, with, the, with the overthrow of Salvador Allende, a socialist that was elected and replaced with Augusto Pinochet, who was a vicious dictator. The mothers of Plaza de Mayo. So I, I'm, I'm to the left of all. Well, in, in my organization, I'm the left winger out of all the organizations because I'm, I'm pro peace. Um, but there, I, there's socialist communist supporters of the School of America? No. Oh, good. No. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be another one of those bad calls. No, uh, what happened was in DSOC, the Democratic Social Organizing Committee, the, the old joke was what about the human rights violations in Latin America? And then the Social Democrats were staunchly anti communist. So, what about the human rights violations in Eastern Europe under Soviet oppression? Well, that's true. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you see where the ideology uh, splits? Well, I don't but understand. Social Democrats. Uh, Unfortunately, support of World War One. Those that didn't became communists. That's how the Communist Party came about in Germany and in other countries. 
and then those ones that supported uh, the Vietnam War started up these other groups headed by David McReynolds and Michael Harrington. Anything else? Yeah, well that, that's good. I had to go. But, um, I'm so sorry. I, had, you know, I think I, uh, just from talking to people, there's a lot of socialists in the country that just don't want to say so. Yeah. I'm not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> They're telling us, I heard somebody on the radio say socialism. Some, some know-it-all on the radio was saying socialism is when the government that's okay. means it yeah. that means it productively. I don't think it's socialism. Maybe that's how they conceptualize it sometimes. You know, the postdoc is owned by the government. Yeah, or oh, that's the program yeah. we're right now. Yeah. Like, is there any more in your speech today? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we have, uh, I'm sorry. Talk uh, later. Yeah. We'll see you at it's wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Thank you all you guys for coming. My, my last uh, person of the day is, is, is um, Jack London. Jack London. Jack London. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, so we have three socialists, democratic socialists that is, who basically shaped the movement for the good and the bad. The bad because the movement was divided, as you know, over, in, in, in what was it? World War I and Vietnam. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's what divided the socialist movement. Really? World War One divided the socialist movement worldwide. But Norman Thomas always ran for the Socialist Party, I know that. Yeah, but he was for, for he, he was anti-communist, but he was pro-peace and pro-trade with the Soviet Union. Yeah. Movement. Oh, wow, well, that's a... He was pro-peace. Pro-peace to be anti-capitalist war. <laughs> <laughs> Party? <laughs> you don't have to be pro peace to be anti capitalist war. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's what Vietnam is. Mean, throw guns at a situation. That's, throw that's, guns that's, at a That's a capitalist war. Yeah. Exactly. You know like Lyndon Johnson said, we could have food stamps, but we could have war. Well, <laughs> yeah, he messed up with that. I, actually, there's a wonderful it, Helen like Keller it. quote about this. Good. Good. I, I gotta find it. I just, did I, you, did I, you I skip just over? saw it right now. I, I was listening to a radio show the other day. I'm yeah. not sure who it was, but somebody said to define socialism, and the the the, the radio host said socialism is when the government owns the means of production. That's communism, isn't it? Um, not entirely. Not entirely. Not entirely. Because remember, the social democratic movement moved towards the center. The social democratic party, the heartland of democratic socialism in Germany. Well, used to be in favor of the abolition of, of capitalism. Mm -hmm. They, since World War II, have moved towards the center yeah. uh, regarding their stance on a more democratic workplace mm -hmm. and a reformist capitalism. Yeah. So then, they got, what's it called by Helen Keller? Helen Keller. Read out loud, brother. Helen Keller. <laughs> she would have been signing it in my hand. Yes, okay. But uh, in spite of the historical proof of the futility of war, yeah. The United States is preparing to raise a billion dollars and a million soldiers in preparation for war. Behind the active agitators for defense, you will find J.P. Morgan and company, and the capitalists who have invested their money in traffic plans, and others that turn out implements of murder. They want armaments because they beget war, for these capitalists want to develop new markets for their hideous traffic. Why don't you make a jump heap and heap of your master's religion, your master's war, his civilization, his kings and his customs that tend to reduce a man to a brute and God into a monster? Helen Keller. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's rock, <is> that? <laughs> 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 nah, I mean, after reading Helen Keller, did you have any idea that she was as radical? I didn't know. Well, I not. No. Except from your early Occupy speeches. Yeah. Party of Helen Keller, Mother Jones, <laughs> Michael Harrington, and April Randolph. Yeah. Um, um, Jack um, London. Okay, I'm sorry. What's, what's your question? I'm just trying to remember what I was thinking about. And, uh, That's okay. I mean, socialism. Well, Jack London, uh, Helen Keller was a wobbler, yeah. IWW member. Jack London, I believe, helped um, the. Where is where is where? Okay. The. Um, Oh, Jack London helped uh, found the uh, Intercollegiate Socialist Society, which was the precursor to my caucus, which is the uh, youth organization for yeah, the, which is the youth organization for the the Socialist Party. Uh, Jack London. Now back then it wasn't a radical students group like we know today. Back then it was more like a social club. You know what I'm talking about, right? 
back then it was more like a social, social club uh, where people would get together and they would lecture on the issues of the day. Like uh, uh, Jack London who lectured uh, extensively on uh, the rights of workers um, and Jack London who was a journalist as well as a great author. Jack London wrote Call the Wild. Uh, show me a place, any sixth grade classroom where you cannot find Call of the Wild and you're going to see it. Jack London wrote Call of the Wild, but again, we don't learn the fact that Jack London was a socialist. We don't learn that at all. Just like we don't learn, we don't see, we don't hear about Helen Keller's radical activity through Hollywood. I blame Hollywood in part, but but we don't hear about Jack London's radical activity because he supported workers' rights. Um, he was a racist, as Heron and I talked about. Jack London said the only thing more dangerous in the world is a horizontal N I G G E R. I think he was referencing very very horribly to um, to the. Uh, interracial marriage uh, oh, yeah. uh, interracial marriages in this country. Yeah. Um, so it was here. Yeah. <laughs> Part of it. I don't even think I can go ahead. No. <laughs> Anything. There's there's no there's no there's no censorship here. You can ask me any question, no, I'll answer. No, no. Well I mean Jack London would be, you know, was active in the nineteen nineteen. So I don't think it's you know like like yeah. a, there's a piece of of place here, but obviously part of me begs the question like, well, why do we talk about him then? You know, because because you know like well, well he was amazing so writer, he was an amazing journalist, but did he really care about when he, when we say Jack London cared about workers' rights, which he did, passion all workers' rights was it yeah. all oh, workers' no, rights only right or was it white workers' rights? Yeah, he he was yeah. probably from yeah. the school of thought that thought that black people weren't people. Exactly. That's the thing. I mean, that was really a thought. Yeah. And even in the 1930s, there was this whole thing of eugenics and everything. Yeah. That was a that was a big Darwinism, movement. you name it. Well, right, but Helen Keller didn't have that thought. Helen Keller did not have that thought. Helen Keller, she did. She was colorblind. The beginning of time, interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> literally, since the beginning of time, have not had that thought. They no, decided no, not American, to be part. It's an American the, scientific uh, theory. You know, I mean, the, the whole thing about it was like pre-genetics. Yeah. yeah. You know, they were trying to figure out how to make the human race perfect. Yeah. And part of being perfect is being white. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because, because and non-disabled too, as well. Huh? And non-disabled too, as well. Well, that's true. Oh, yeah. Well, Helen Keller really... I, 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 Mike, I want you to go to the library after I, after I return this book. I want you to go to the library to take it out. <laughs> I, I can't, actually. I owe them too much. <laughs> <laughs> They I, I, this, this this wrap it up. Did you see it? I can see it from here. Did you just take a look at it? I'm, I'm listening to you. I, mean, I don't want to read right now. Okay. okay. Read, well, we got we got we got A. Philip Randolph. We got Helen Keller. And we got Jack London. Now, Jack London. Remember, what was he? White. White. And he did he what go to Alaska? Yes, I believe Actually, he did. so he wrote about the Call of the Wild, which is sort of based on his... And White Fang, which was yeah. one of my favorite yeah, movies as a child. Yeah, those are his big books, right? No, did he, he write anything on socialism? Um, no, I didn't, because I didn't. Did I only knew White Fang and Call of the Wild. Did he? Did he? Oh, yeah, he was a journalist. Oh, really? He was a journalist, and he was a Socialist Party member of Oakland. He, mayor uh, yeah, of Oakland? Mayor of Oakland, yeah, okay, Socialist Party. Why do you check it? It, it, it's amazing how many socialists and social democrats were actually elected to the United States Congress, a dozen state legislatures, and uh, some mayoral positions in city, many city council members. I mean, in, in, in the 1800, late 1800s, communists were uh, city council members, were on the city council in New York yeah, City. Yeah. Now, we leave it up to the Green Party. Well, because they've, they've, uh, they've got this very... And, and, I, and I don't mean to cut you off. I got the end of machine. Exactly. I don't mean to cut you off, but get this. Well, Shh, this no, this fine woman understand. asked me uh, what was the peak in popularity for the Socialist Party. Eugene Debs got 900,000 votes from jail. I know. Um, in 1912, Eugene Debs uh, got over a million votes and got 6% of the popular vote, the largest. Uh, the largest, uh, or the, the peak of popularity in Socialist Party history. No offense, 
you're agreeing, right? Oh, yeah. How much did Ralph Nader get in 2000? Oh, I didn't get it. 2.5. I have no idea. You got 2.5% yeah, of the popular vote. That was a... Debs in 1900, or in 1912, got 6% of the popular vote. So if Ralph Nader did you, did you got 2.5% of the popular vote... You read people's history? No, that's not throw Nader in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Nader's a great guy. I'm just saying that the socialists... <laughs> Were, were a third party not to be reckoned with. They weren't. Not, not in 1912. Not in 1912 when Debs got 6% of the popular. Nader barely got 2.5. The Green Party is the new Socialist Party since the Red Scare. And I would argue that it is the new, it's the new Social, or it's the new Workers' Party because it's it's a viable party. It is a Workers' Party. It's a Workers' Party. It's a viable party. Yeah. And, um, Jack London, there's no doubt. If Jack London, this is a biography, great biography. Um, when, if Jack London ran for mayor of Oakland, again, he'd be a great. I think he'd be less racist. Mm -hmm. Because I believe Jack London was a victim of the times. Not, be, not to say that his rhetoric was, I believe he was a victim of the times. Just like my grandfather, who was a Klansman. My, my great grandfather, um, Frank H, or Frank Mott, or not Frank Modern, uh, Carl Modern, was born in 1900. He was born in 1900, and my father found a bed sheet, freshly dry cleaned, in his closet. A, a bed sheet, a, a, a clan's outfit. Yeah. A clan outfit? Yeah. My father Didn't found it. My grandfather was in the clan? Yes. And he never told anybody? No. He never told anybody. No, remember, Granddad Carl was born in 1900. With who? He, my grandfather was, was a clan. Yeah, right. He was born in 1900. So he, he was 20 in 1920. Yeah. What was going on? The peak in popularity, birth of a nation, yeah, yeah. peak in popularity for the KKK. Yeah. The KKK, I would argue, in its horrible demeanor, is not as organized is they were in the 1920s. Listen to their speeches in the 1920s. Now listen to their speeches now. It's, I don't know. <laughs> you listen to their speeches now, it's like an oi festival where you got screaming into a microphone and you got like loud music and you got a lot of swearing and profanity. Then look at their speeches in the 1920s. Talking about mongrel children and all this other oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And you see what you see, you understand what I'm saying? So I think my grandfather, who was born in 1920, or who was born in 1900, was a victim of the times because it was at that time yeah, it, was it, didn't, popular. it was popular. So what I'm saying is that Jack London would have would have gotten over his racism, but he would have been a green mayor. Uh, and uh, there's no doubt that the Green Party, if he would have abandoned his, his racism, yeah. would, have, would have supported him. I mean, they supported John, no. for Pete's sake. No. <laughs> I think we're going to wrap it up, too. Okay. okay, we're going to wrap it up. In, in short, in short, socialism is not dead in this country. It's just misunderstood. But it's not government control. And it's not government control. It's more democratic workplace. And it's not synonymous with Marxism-Leninism, which is third international communism. Marx? I don't understand. I don't understand how people could do that. No, I don't. I don't believe it either. Yeah. But as a green, as a good green, pro worker, pro peace, pro democracy, pro worker, pro peace, pro democracy, pro health care, as a good green, a lot of people are pro that. You mirror the Second International, which is the International Democratic Socialism, which is not synonymous with Marxism and Leninism. It's it was the best philosophy and very popular in its time. It gave us Debs, it gave us Harrington, it gave us A. Philip Randolph, who was an anti-communist by the way, A. Philip right. Randolph, pioneer of the civil rights movement, Helen Keller, Mother Jones, and unfortunately Jack London, or fortunately Jack London. <laughs> we love Jack London, Jack I love you, but you're a victim of the times, man. Okay. A little bit of reaction. A little behind the times. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. For God bless you. Okay. Viva la revolution. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that right now we have too many different parties. I know. I know. Who want the same thing. <laughs> you know.